This week, we saw games getting Steam Deck verified, new community-led apps getting updates, and an absolutely massive stable Steam Deck client update deliver a long-awaited feature. Plus, we saw the launch of a brand new free and open source engine rebuild project, and it had its first release, and I could not be more excited. All of this and more in this week's Linux Gaming News. First up, some free and open source excitement. Uh, this is Open Black version 0.1.0, and uh, boy, am I excited about this. This is the first build of Open Black, and it was released on uh, the 4th, I believe. Yeah, September 4th. And my god, this has me so excited. Uh, open Black is a free and open source re implementation of 2001's Black and White, the god sim from Peter Molyneux and Lionhead Studios. Now, Black and White and its sequel are some of my favorite PC games of all time, and they're becoming increasingly more difficult to play on modern hardware. That's why I'm like super stoked about this project. This is a fan-made re-implementation of the engine, and you'll be able to play these classic games using modern hardware. The engine is built using, quote, modern C++ and modern rendering engines, OpenGL and Vulkan. Now, in order to play Open Black, you actually need the original game's assets. For most people, this will mean obtaining a physical copy of the game because uh, it's not available from digital storefronts. The initial 0.1.0 release is available now from their GitHub repo, and fair warning, there's no launcher GUI, so you're gonna need to be comfortable with the command line to get this running. Now, I imagine that people watching this channel are going to be just fine using the command line to launch the game. I just wanted to put that out there for you. I'm really looking forward to the future of this project. This actually just entered my radar this week. So I'm very excited about this and I can't wait to see where this goes from here. So the recent Doom and Doom 2 enhancement ports from Night Dive just got updated to be Steam Deck verified. Now this is a symbolic step for this release of Doom since everybody knew it was already playable. But the problem was that this was actually the ultimate Doom release on Steam before it became Doom and Doom 2, or Doom plus Doom 2. And for some reason, the ultimate Doom was listed as unsupported since the first time it got rated. But the cool thing is it's now rated as Steam Deck verified. You can see right here, uh, the game does not default to external USB controllers on deck and may require manual switching uh, the active controller via the quick active menu. That's the only issue that we have right here. But I think that this is uh, still a pretty great uh, build of the game to play on your Steam Deck. Now this release offers some new and excellent features and new ways to play the game. For example, the built-in mod manager offers compatible mods that have been released by the community since Boom was a thing. They also have 16 player deathmatch online. They have 4K resolution support boom source compatibility and a lot more plus there's a new episode called legacy of rust that was created by id night dive and machine games this is a neat little package and at least for me i'm a huge fan of night dive and the work that they do so if you want to check this out you can use the affiliate links below to pick it up for yourself all right next up we have decky loader version 3.0 now this new version provides support for the new steam families update but more than that this new version of Decky Loader includes massive stability improvements for end users, as well as a revamped API that now provides async support. Now, this is a really exciting release for Decky Loader as it is, in my opinion, one of the very first things that anybody who's new to the Steam Deck should do when they first get one. And it's great to see them releasing timely changes to uh, Decky Loader to support new features uh, to the Steam client. And we'll get to that in a second. All right, next up, the Deck Filter app has received a new update and it includes some excellent new features. If you're not familiar, Deck Filter is a companion app for the Steam Deck available on iOS and Android. Some of the highlights in this release include the Steam Reviews Sync, which automatically syncs and displays Steam reviews within your library, helping you make informed decisions. Uh, the Order by Review Score, which allows you to uh, sort games based on Steam review scores, prioritizing the best rated titles. Display options customize if whether reviews or playtime appear in your library overview. And native Linux support, which I've been talking to Felix about uh, native Linux support, and it's finally been added here, replacing the pending or unknown badges for a lot of ProtonDB tiers to show if the game is native or not. 
for wishlist, there's a price filter modal, which easily filters wishlist item by price, making it simpler to find budget-friendly games or deals, and discount-only toggles that help you quickly spot games that are currently on sale. Next up, there's order by compatibility and ProtonDB. So you can sort games by compatibility and ProtonDB scores. There's also the updated ProtonDB filter modal, which refines game selection using ProtonDB ratings and focusing on the best supported titles. There's also a few fixes that they have listed here. And overall, this is another great release. I'm actually a huge fan of this project. Uh, and I talked about it a couple times here on the channel. And a lot of people who get it, like, actually really appreciate this thing. So if you haven't checked it out, you can head over to uh, the Google Play Store or iOS, the, the App Store, I guess, is what they call it. It's a few bucks on Google Play, and I think it's definitely worth it to help you sort out your library. All right, before we move on, I got to ask you a question. Are you enjoying this video? Do you believe in the work that I'm doing here? Why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos just like this. You can also get subscribed if that's more your speed. All right, next up, let's talk about Playtron and Lutris. Now, as evidenced by the comments on my previous video, which you can find up here, there is a ton of skepticism surrounding Playtron. Playtron is the financial backing of Playtron OS, a partially open, partially proprietary Linux gaming operating system. And uh, Playtron boasts about their investors, their website feels like a tech startup more than a FOSS project. And the first product to launch with Playtron OS is a crypto and Web3 device. So I at least understand the skepticism here. However, one of the things that I find most interesting about this project is just how many free and open source developers are involved here. I think it's important to note that Playtron OS has developers from Winesap OS, Chimera OS, Open Gamepad UI, Heroic Games Launcher, and Box64. But now they also have Matthew Commandon, the creator and lead developer of Lutris. In a recent post on Patreon, Matthew shared an update where he revealed his involvement with the project. Having a console-like experience on Linux was something I've always wanted, but building an OS for Lutris was always out of scope given the effort required to maintain it. Maintaining the Lutris project is already quite a substantial load, and we wouldn't have the manpower to drive such a project. But with joining forces with other projects and getting support from investors, that's a whole different story. My plan was to find a job after the Scale Expo, ending a period of only relying on savings and donations. I put aside the other projects I had and got in touch with Playtron. A few weeks after, I was joining their team as a developer working mostly on the UI side of things. So this is interesting. And Matthew points out the fact that there are lots of other um, open source developers that are involved in Playtron. He even goes so far as to point out the fact that Playtron has uh, some Web3 and cryptocurrency involvement. There have also been some concerns about Playtron being a crypto slash Web3 project. While the first partner to ship Playtron powered devices, Sui, is a Web3 company, Playtron itself is not. It's a vendor neutral solution to anyone who wishes to make Linux powered game consoles, whether it's a Web3 company, a hardware manufacturer, or just someone who wants to repurpose an old build as a living room console. And from this perspective, I'm going to have to agree with Matthew to some degree. I mean, do we hold it against Ubuntu that it's one of the most popular server distributions out there and therefore crypto is mined on Ubuntu? No, we don't. So I understand this. And while I am still somewhat skeptical of this project, I do think that there is an opportunity for Playtron to grow their install base by partnering with something like the ROG Ally uh, manufacturer Asus and delivering a device that way. But no matter what, I'm gonna continue watching this project and I'll talk about it here when I think they do something interesting. Uh, I know that there are people who are very skeptical of this, and I am to some degree as well, but I think that this is kind of interesting. Uh, and this is something I've been waiting for for a long time. So the fact that we have two uh, companies with money behind them pushing Linux as the next gaming operating system. I mean, we're spoiled for choice here, guys. Come on. So if you're a software developer looking to advance your career or you're looking to get into software development, uh, I'm pretty excited about this humble bundle here. This is the Software Architecture 2024 bundle from O'Reilly, and it seems pretty comprehensive. With 24 books coming in at over $1,400 in value, you can get it for 25 bucks. 
uh, if you're looking to build software as a service architectures, if you want to learn best practices for serverless development on AWS, or if you're looking to master API architecture, this bundle quote equips you to design, implement, manage, scale, and secure software that aligns with business goals and industry standards now and in the future. As with any Humble Bundle, your purchase supports charity. And if you use my affiliate link below, you can pick up a copy of this bundle and support the show at no additional cost to you. If you want to pick up this bundle, it lasts for the next probably about three days by the time you're watching this. Uh, so you might want to act fast. And if you use my link, thank you. All right, next up, let's talk about the Steam Client update dated September 11th. It's a banger. I mean, this massive stable update rolled out a huge number of changes for both the desktop and the Steam Deck client. Now, some of the important changes include things that we've talked about in previous videos. Things like they've added a drop down to settings display advanced to select the maximum resolution allowed to be used by games. This is the global version of the game resolution drop down already available under game settings in general. They added a sign out to the power button menu on deck. The friends list will now show a Steam Deck icon instead of a gamepad if the user is playing on the Steam Deck. They replaced the friends list VR icon with a new graphic that also matches the in-game or online friend state color. Improvements to the keyboard event tracking and audio latency in updated SDL builds. They improved the client startup performance. They improved reliability of games in common collections in library. And they've also fixed a bunch of other things. Then for screenshots, they redesigned the screenshots manager. They've added easier ways to share screenshots directly from Steam, including copying directly to your clipboard, send to friend or group chat via Steam chat, uh, send to your phone via the Steam mobile app, and export as a new file to your computer. They've also improved the performance and reliability of the screenshot manager, and they've added the ability to search within the app filter dropdown. They've also done some preemptive work to provide future support for recordings and clips to integrate with the screenshot manager when Steam game recording releases out of beta. They also included some platform specific fixes for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, as well as the Steam input updates. However, the biggest feature has easily got to be the release of Steam Families. Now, this is a huge revamp of the old family sharing scheme that was being used for unintended purposes by a lot of people. And while there are going to be people who gripe about this fact, I think that this is pretty exciting. According to the announcement post, quote, when you join a Steam family, you automatically gain access to the shareable games that your family members own, and they will also be able to access the shareable titles in your library. The next time you log into Steam, this new family library will appear in the left column as a subsection of your games list. You maintain ownership of your current titles, and when you purchase a new game, it will show up in your collection. Best of all, when you're playing a game from your family library, you will create your own save games, earn your own Steam achievements, have access to workshop files, and more. Family sharing enables you to play games from other family members' libraries, even if they are online playing another game. If your family library has multiple copies of a game, multiple members of that family can play that same game at the same time. For a more detailed look at how family sharing works, see the FAQ. But Steam Families also includes revamped parental controls, and this allows parents to create and manage Steam accounts for their children and control what games and apps those child accounts have access to. It also lets parents restrict access to the store, community, and friends chat, set playtime limits on an hourly or daily basis, view playtime reports, approve or deny requests from child accounts for additional playtime or feature access on a permanent or temporary basis, and recover a child's account if they lost their password. This is a very cool change for Steam to make, and I know that Emily and I are gonna be definitely taking advantage of the library sharing features. I have nearly a thousand games in my Steam library, which is a number I'm proud of and also kind of afraid of. Uh, and Emily also has a bunch in hers that I don't own. So I'm really glad to see this change finally making it to the stable Steam client. Well, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover this week. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can help support this show on Patreon, or you can pick up a copy of my game, Doodling's Arcade Sports Ball, on Steam or Google Play. And don't miss my most recent video here, where we went hands-on with Playtron OS Alpha. It was pretty interesting. Thank you.